Hello friends, it's Cassie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have the Simon Says Stamp Beautiful Butterflies Kit. This is the June 2020 kit. And as far as I know, it is still available, so I'll have that linked down below. But let's go ahead and take a look at what came inside this kit. Uh, it's always full of stuff. We got candy. We also have some iridescent Gina K Glitz Glitter Gel. It's beautiful. We also have these typography Tim Holtz Ideology letters. I was a little stumped, but you know, it's always fun to kind of challenge yourself and there's 73 pieces in there. So we'll do something with that. Get a coupon code. You're also going to get the Simon Says Stamp 6x6 Butterfly Trails stencil. I have something fun planned with that. You're also going to get the Tim Holtz Ideology Clippings stickers and I do something fun with those as well. At least I think they're all fun, who knows. And then we have the paper pad. It's the 6x8, 12 sheets of Simple Stories Vintage Garden. And this stuff is beautiful. And I love how there's a couple in here that you could just frame if you really wanted to. So, so pretty. And then the, even the last two, you could cut up and just make into some cards. And I do that at the end as well. And I'll show you those. Those are some bonus cards. The stamp set is by Simon Says Stamp, obviously. And it's called Beautiful Butterflies. And it has some amazing sentiments and gorgeous butterflies. And... As far as I'm concerned, you can never really have enough butterfly stamps. <laughs> so you get an idea sheet and then you also get some cardstock. I think I was supposed to get cotton candy, but they substituted with that purple. And I'll be honest, I don't use it because it does not match. So let's go ahead and get started with what we're making. For our first card, I've already cut down some pattern paper and I cut this to be four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. So it will be the whole front of an A2 size card. And I have another piece of pattern paper that's the full size. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna put this inside of my regular Misty. And I'm gonna grab three of those butterflies. I'm gonna stamp right onto that pattern paper. I love stamping on pattern paper. I love paper piecing, all those things. I'm not gonna paper piece today, but I am going to do some gold heat embossing on there. And it's gonna look really pretty. So I'll cover that with some magic powder bag, and then I'll ink up my butterflies with some embossing ink, which is just a clear sticky ink. Any clear sticky ink will do, because you wanna make sure that your embossing powder can stick to that. And then I'll pull that up, and then I'm gonna cover that actually with the Brutus Monroe Gilded Embossing Powder. So that is the pretty gold that is by Brutus Monroe, and it is an ultra fine, so it's, it's awesome. All right, so I'm gonna put away my mess so that I don't flick it all over the place. <laughs> and then I am going to heat set that till that is smooth and melted. And then I'm also going to go ahead and just fussy cut those out. So my plan is to have these beautiful golden butterflies and they're gonna be on my card. Now I did wanna add a little interest to the edges of this piece. So I'm taking my ink pad, my embossing ink pad, and I'm just rubbing that on the edges and it's gonna look I don't want it to be straight, so it's not going to be straight. So it is going to be a very rustic kind of look, very distressed sort of look. And I love it. I think it looks so cool. And if you don't like it to go in that far, you can just take your paintbrush and kind of move some of it away. I rub away some of the area where just some spots got. But I think this will turn out really cool. So once again, I'll heat set this till this is smooth and melted. And then... Once that's all ready to go, I'm going to put that inside of my makeshift splatter box. I have some vintage photo distress paint. I'll put a little bit of that on a stamp block and I'll have a paintbrush that has a little bit of water on it, not much, and I'll splatter that all over my background. I just love splatter. Who doesn't, right? And then I'll pull that out and I'll heat set that as well. I just want to make sure that that's good and dry. And my I've decided for one of my sentiments, I'm grabbing the You're Enough stamp, and I'm just rubbing that on my hand because the oils in your hand will kind of condition the stamp a little bit. And I'll stamp that with some Espresso me Memento, or it's Espresso Truffle Memento ink. And then I'm gonna trim that down just using my guillotine trimmer. And then we'll have a nice trimmed down sentiment. I will grab one from the stickers that came in the kit, and then I'll cover my little butterflies with some foam tape on the back peel off all that release paper and I have this on my glass mat I'm trying very hard to center and so in order to do that you want to start with your very middle piece and so I'm kind of you know eyeballing from top and from the side to make sure that I have them decently centered I don't get that top one very or centered very well so I will peel him up thankfully he wasn't stuck down too much and he didn't damage anything and then I'll just stick him down a little bit better and then I'll adhere my sticker which says yes my darling and then the other one says you are enough 
and I did put a few stickers on the inside of the card because I'm going to give this to my daughter so um, and then I'll cover the my panel with the back of it with some liquid glue and I'll adhere that down to my card base and then that's going to finish off our first card. I love all that gold embossing on there. It's so beautiful. And I think my daughter's really going to like this card. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to repurpose a, a frame that I bought back in 2008. Yes, it is that old. Um, but I'm going to pull off the pieces. This was, I bought this on super clearance at Target. Um, I don't even, it's probably like a buck or something like that. So keep an eye out. Sometimes you can repurpose some of these frames. And so very exciting. All right, so I'm going to pull out all the pieces from the inside, including the glass, because we don't need that. And then we're going to line this up on top of a piece of the pattern paper that I want to use. I didn't line it up right, but this will work. It's fine. Uh, and I'm just going to take a pencil and I'm going to tr trace along the inside of the frame because we're going to cut that piece out. That'll just make it that much simpler. And then, um, yeah, I'm just going to stick my scissors right through the center of that. And it's not going to be perfect, but it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'll just cut right into the center there and save this scrap because I will use it for other things. But I'll just trim out that rectangle. But I love repurposing frames and things like that because, I don't know, just giving things new life is just a lot of fun. And I figured this would be a really good way to use those typography letters that came in this kit because I just thought they were way too thick to put on a card. Um, just me personally just didn't want to do that. So I thought this would be a lot of fun. And I needed to make a gift for one of my daughter's friends for her high school graduation. So I'm going to take some collage medium and it came out, a, lo a lot of it came out. So I'm going to take a paintbrush. I would have done this anyway, but I'll take a paintbrush and I am going to just spread that glue all around the outside or all over the, the this frame. We're going to cover this with that paper and so I want to make sure that I have a good coverage of glue. And so I'll just slap that paper down and it's okay that it's hanging off the edge. We'll take care of that in a little bit. And uh, then I'm going to take one of the other pieces of pattern paper and I'll stick that right on top of this piece. So I'll use that collage medium that I have left on my paintbrush and then I'll tack down my, my uh, pattern paper right to the front of that. I am going to take what's left over on that paintbrush and I'm going to put it all over the front of this pattern paper as well. It'll just kind of protect that surface just a little bit. I mean, it's not going to do anything real crazy to protect it, but it will protect it a little bit. And then I don't have to worry about um, not necessarily water or anything like that. But because it is paper, you know, paper obviously can be rubbed and, and not that this wouldn't be, but I just wanted to put a little protective layer on top of that. Then we're going to heat set that with our heat tool. And then I'm going to flip this over and set this on top of my glass mat and use an X-Acto knife. Now I've heard people talk about how they've scratched their glass mat. I have never done that with an X-Acto knife. Uh, and it might be because I make sure that my blades are nice and sharp and I don't press very hard. So I'm not saying you couldn't scratch your glass mat, but I have yet to do that. And so I'll just cut around all the edges and then we'll be left with this. I'm not happy with how that looks entirely, so I'm going to take a sander that I have and I'm just going to sand all the edges just to make sure that they're pretty flush. And it also adds this level of distress, which is kind of cool. I don't want the edges of the frame to stay the original color that they were, so I've grabbed some gold paint and this is a super low quality gold paint that I have. And so I, I poured a bunch of it on my glass mat, not sure of how much I would actually need. So um, I wasn't sure how many coats I would have to do. I ended up having to do a couple of coats, but I'm doing it all along the edges. I'm even flicking into the paper. I want it to not just stay on the edges. I want there to be a little, little flicks of gold going into the paper. And so we'll go all around the edge, just painting that. So it's not that wood color, that light wood color. And then flick in. And you'll see what I'm talking about here as it gets a little closer. Because um, I'm kind of off screen here. Sorry about that. Sometimes I just get into create mode and I'm not even paying attention to exactly to what I'm doing um, or where I'm positioned. So here I'll set it down on the glass mat and then I will start flicking some more of that and then I'll go into the inside of the frame and do the same thing. So here you'll kind of get an idea on that green as to what I'm talking about. It's kind of subtle, but it does add little flecks of gold, which is really nice. 
and then like I said I'll add another coat here after this one is fairly dry. Alright, the next thing I want to do is pull out those letters uh, and I wasn't sure exactly at first what, le what I wanted to say but then I decided beautiful. I thought that would be very fitting for who I am giving this to and I had all that gold paint sitting there and I thought I would paint these letters but that just wasn't going to work. So I pulled out my gold mixative. Um, these are part of the alcohol ink line and this is a mixative and so I've got a cotton swab. I've got a couple of cotton swabs and I'm just kind of putting the gold mixative onto the letters and using the cotton swab to move that around and it does a pretty good job. Now it definitely looks distressed. It's not perfect but again I don't want it to be perfect. I want it to look distressed. I'll put some collage medium onto my glass mat and then I'll just tap the backs of my letters into that and then this way I can adhere down my letters and I don't have to worry about those coming up. This is a pretty strong adhesive and so we'll just set those down right on top and, and I will straighten them out a little bit better but I'm really enjoying how this is coming together. And this is actually our final step. I thought I'd do more on that right hand side but I thought the paper was plenty busy so it really wasn't necessary and then uh, my recipient can put whatever kind of picture she would like in there. I just think that this is fun. And those letters come in very handy for something like this. So here you have it. It's all finished. I love this project. So happy with how that turned out. And then, yeah, we'll move on to our next card. For project number three, I was inspired by a recent video I watched by Nina Marie. Um, and she did some watercoloring through a stencil. So what she did is she started off by tracing the stencil. And this is what I'm doing with the pencil here. And it's funny because, you know, I'm trying to go light. And I'm actually feeling like I'm going really light, but it turns out I'm not. So I'll pull that stencil away, and there's a lot of pencil marks, but because I planned a watercolor, I don't want that pencil to be that dark. So I'm just going to kind of lightly erase it so it's, there's still, the lines are there, but they're not quite as strong. And then I'm going to come in with my Arteza 36 pan of watercolors along with a water brush. I'm putting down some fairly clean water to start, and then I'm just grabbing some of the colors that I had mixed on my palette and I'm just letting the water do some of the work with those. This one I forgot to put the water down first, but it's a smaller image, so it's not as big of a deal. And then I'm gonna grab, um, I'll do, I'll see my, my water is not very clean, <laughs> but that's okay, it, it really doesn't affect the colors too much. I'm gonna come in with some orange there in that one. And to be honest with you, my painting here sort of looked a little bit more like a hot mess than anything else didn't look near as good as Nina Marie's did, but that's okay. You know, we're, I'm, it's the first time I've ever tried this. And if we don't branch our branch out a little bit or spread our wings and try a few things, we never learn. Right. But as with all watercolor, I feel like the biggest thing you have to do is just keep moving, just keep going, keep, you know, slapping down color and keep working. Watercolor works best in layers. And I often find that I may not be in love with a project to start, but I end up usually loving my projects in the end. And maybe they're not for everybody, but I typically end up really liking what I've created. And maybe it's because I did stick with the process. I'm not sure. So I'll just keep doing um, the different butterflies. And, and it also could be this color palette that I've chosen with the yellow, the orange, the pink, and the purple. Uh, it's not typically a color palette that I would go for, to be honest with you. I... I mean, I love all the colors, but this particular palette isn't necessarily my favorite unless I was doing like a sunset and then I was going to have something on the front of it. But just to have these colors, it's not necessarily my favorite. So I'm going to keep trying to work between those colors, maybe even bring in some other colors. And uh, I think I only have about two more butterflies to paint anyway. So I'll just keep trying to put down some fairly clean water, put down some color, and then eventually I'll be done with those butterflies and I still have their trail in between. So remember this stencil was the um, butterfly trails stencil. So after I get the butterflies colored, I'll work on their trail and their trail I think really adds to the, the scene itself. So I'll finish up here and I stuck with mostly those colors and then I'm going to bring in this like bluish green color for the trail and basically I'm just sticking dots down where the do the trail of dots were and then I like I'm starting to like it a lot more. Now in the video I watched Nina Marie did a 
where she took the stencil and then she shifted it a little bit and then she put some uh, Gina K. Well, the same thing we got in the kit, the iridescent Gina K Glitz Glitter Gel. She puts that down. And I do put some Glitz Glitter Gel down, but I'm not going to shift my stencil. But before I do that, I do grab a gold gel pen and I'm going to go around all of my butterflies just to kind of add a little something to it. And you'll notice I did splatter some of that blue green all over that background too. And I think that really added as well. And I'm also going to splatter some gold on the background. And then once that's all dry, here's where I'm going to put some purple tape down and then stick my stencil right over the top of what I colored. And then I'll grab that iridescent Gina K Glitz Glitter Gel and I'll spread that all over where those butterflies are. And then I'll pull that away once I'm done. And I'm actually pretty happy with how this is coming along now. So it's funny how in the different stages of watercolor, you may not necessarily like what you're doing, but if you just stick with it, you can come up with something pretty cool. I grabbed one of the patterns from the pattern paper pack and I'm gonna stamp the sentiment that says beautiful friend right down onto that with some embossing ink and then I'll cover that with some British Monroe alabaster embossing powder and then I'll heat set that till that is smooth and melted and that ends up being a really nice touch right on the top and of course Miles has to inspect what we're doing here and uh, then I'm going to fussy cut out beautiful friend and I'll even take another bit of that pattern paper and I'm going to trim down two strips. One will be a little bit bigger than the other. I kind of like to do that. I'll leave one strip to be a little bit bigger and then the second strip will be a little bit smaller. And then I'll put some liquid glue on the back of those and then I'll attach those down to the left hand side. Just using that same or that liquid glue that I have been using previously. And then I'll take some foam tape for my beautiful friend and I'll attach that. But before I do that, I am going to do something on the inside. I don't do something on the inside of all the cards I make today, but I did stamp out a couple of the butterflies or one of the butterflies on the inside using some Psych ink by Simon Hurley. And then I'd already stamped and embossed that sentiment that says thinking of you. And then I'll use the same liquid glue and adhere my card panel down to my card base. And that card base is just from some of the cardstock that came in the kit. And I'll have a little bit of leftover, so I'll flip that over and trim those off. And that's going to finish off our third project. And I do really like how this one turned out. Didn't start out great, but I think it ended up pretty nice. For card number four, I want to make a spinner card. So I already have my cardstock cut down to four and a, uh, well, no, five and a half inches by eight and a half inches, and I'm going to score that at four and a quarter inches. So it will be a side folding A2 size card. And I have my pattern paper trimmed down to four inches by five and a quarter. So there will be a, or five and a half. So there will be a little bit of a lip on both the right and left hand side. I'm going to pull out my circle dies. And I wasn't thinking, I ended up doing the small one but what I should have done was the bigger one. I end up fixing it later. I just put the bigger one over the top later. You'll, I mean, you don't see that whole process, but it's just basically doing the same thing I'm doing here. So I have set this down, uh, taped it down with a little bit of purple tape, put the purple tape over my paper, and I'm gonna run this through my die cutting machine. And then I had to, like I said, run it through with the bigger die uh, again. So um, wasn't a big deal, but I, ended up making the mistake and making the smaller one to start and it wouldn't have fit the butterfly. All right, so let me share how I'm doing this. I have tried to center up my butterfly at the very bottom there. Uh, tried to center it between the three inch marks. So that was cut to three inches by five inches. And I'm inking up my butterfly on the top and the bottom, not going to move that stamp at all. And I inked it up with some Raven Detail ink, so that is alcohol marker friendly. So I'm going to quickly color the first butterfly and I'll do the second one the exact same. My hope here was, because this butterfly is fairly symmetrical, now it's not 100% symmetrical, it's but it's pretty close. Uh, typically with this type of style you would want to pick like either something that could be a circle or something that's just symmetrical or maybe even a die that you have a front and a back to. But I didn't have that, so we're going to go with this. And this is my best attempt at trying to make it symmetrical. So that's why I tried to center it the best I could onto the 
the you know in between the three inch mark there and I did fairly okay you'll see here in a bit so I'll finish up my coloring and I brought in some beautiful oranges yellows and I think that turned out nice but one more step before I do that is I want to ink this up again with some embossing ink and then I want to cover that with my Brutus Monroe Raven or golly I keep doing that rainbow sparkle it's basically a clear embossing powder but the clear embossing powder has little bits of glitter in it so it's going to add a lot of sparkle and shine to these little butterflies uh, and it's going to look like it completely covers it here and you're going to think oh no you ruined it but again you know you got to heat it up and you'll see the magic of it so if you've never seen this rainbow sparkle embossing powder it is definitely one to keep an eye out for because it is gorgeous all right, so I'll heat set that and then you'll see that it obviously is going to get a little shiny. And I'll show you up close here in a second after the other one is heat set as well. That it has a ton of sparkle and shine to it. So it's just a fun like extra that you can do for your butterfly. All right, so now I'm just going to cut these apart. I'm not being careful how I cut them apart. What I will need to be careful ab about when I line them up, you know, back to back is that the bottom lines up because that's what I had lined up with when I stamp them out. And I am trying to leave a fairly generous cream colored border around my butterfly so that way in case I didn't stamp it perfectly, which I didn't, that it won't be too noticeable. So I'm just cutting around those, holding those together and trying to make sure that they don't shift any. And then you'll see that I did a fairly decent job. So I've got one for front and back. That one's off just by a little bit, but otherwise I think it turned out pretty good. All right, so here we go. Now we're actually gonna try the spinner. If you've never seen this before, I have some invisible thread. Uh, this is what quilters typically use, but I have some invisible thread and I'm just gonna double it up. And then I'm gonna use some score tape. You wouldn't wanna use liquid glue. You'd wanna use a very strong adhesive such as score tape or something like that. And I'll peel off the release paper. And then I'm gonna take my invisible thread and hold it kind of taut and then set it down on my butterfly. I'll zoom in here in a second so that you can kind of take a look at what I'm talking about. But I have just that thread in the center and then I am going to take some liquid glue around the edges just to make sure that my butterfly is nice and secure and then I'll set the other butterfly right on top so they all match perfectly because I cut them together so that is good. Alright now we're gonna work on actually putting him inside the card itself. So I need both my slate colored cardstock and my pattern paper. And I'll use, again, some score tapes. You would want a very strong adhesive here. And I'm just going to put three strips of that. I'll show you here in a second. Um, and as you can tell, my paper did tear with the purple tape. We've had this conversation before. And I did wipe it on my hand. Uh, and I did think about, after, I, after the fact, I did think about heating up the tape to see if I could remove it. But... <laughs> It was too late at that point. All right, so I'm holding that string fairly taut, nice and tight, and then I'm going to just set it down on top of that score tape that's there. Again, and it wouldn't have to be super tight, but I want it to be fairly tight. And then I'm gonna use my liquid glue again to go around those areas where the um, score tape is not. And then I'll take my pattern paper piece and I'll line up the circle on that, and then we'll stick our piece down. And it's just so cool. So just like that, you'll, and then press really hard. So if you press really hard and then just like that, you'll have a spinner, which is so neat. The recipients love those. I tend to like to make those for my nieces and nephews. And then I'll cut down the excess string. I am going to use my jelly roll pen to put some faux stitching on the edges to kind of draw your eye away from the little tear mark that's there. And then off screen I do stamp and emboss the sentiment that I wanted and I pop that up on foam tape and that's going to finish off our fourth card. And I love how this one turned out. It's always fun to have an interactive card. So super fun. So card number five is actually a pretty simple one. It wasn't even originally in my radar, but I was looking at these stickers and I was just kind of disappointed that I didn't use a lot of them. Uh, they just have a lot of wording on them that might not necessarily fit into anything that I would do, but I thought, boy, they sure would make a lovely background. So I'm gonna cut that down so it will fit on the front of a card. And I thought, well, let me just peel 
the backing off and see if I can get those stickers to stay in and they did so I was really excited about that and now I'm just gonna set that down onto a piece of my lunch bag cardstock I had cut this down to four inches by five and a quarter and I'm just pushing all those words down and yeah they're gonna stick off the edge and there's even a few blank spots but I'll fix that and so I'm just gonna be very careful about peeling away the um, the side or the inside pieces or the negative piece or whatever you want to call it you could probably leave that there if you really really wanted to but I just wanted that out of there uh, I thought the words would have some nice texture on that lunch bag cardstock and like I said oftentimes I don't know what to do with the stickers that come in the kits sometimes but this one like I said I thought would just be a good background so um, and here's how I'm going to fill in those gaps I'll take what little I have left and that one I stuck in there that didn't stick so I'm gonna cut that down and I'll fill in the gaps that way and I'll just keep cutting it and it'll just keep fill it, filling in the gaps and then I've got this big one left and it'll fill in the what's left over which it worked out just perfectly honestly so um, and if it, it, it might have I might have felt differently about these if they had you know words on there like thank you or thinking of you but there was just a lot of them I didn't know what to do with all right, so there it is. I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to trim off all the excess pieces of those stickers for both sides. And then it just makes for this really interesting background that has lots of words and texture, even though the words really don't mean a whole lot to what I'm going to put on the front of it. It just adds some some texture, which is really cool. Uh, my and that's what I have left, just that that small strip of words. I'm going to stamp out that butterfly and I used my hand to um, the oils on my hand to condition the stamp a little bit. I inked it up with some Raven Detail ink and then I'm going to color that with Copic markers and then I will fussy cut that out and then I also heat, uh, heat stamp and emboss the sentiment. My goodness. Uh, and I'm going to stick that down as well eventually here. So I've got my card panel that I adhered to my card base. I put some foam tape on the back of my butterfly and on my words and I'll stick my butterfly down. The thing with this is, yeah, you got to make sure that you put it down where you want it because there's no getting it back up. And so um, it's off a little bit, like off center, but that's fine. I kind of like the way this looks. So there was that one of the little bonus cards that I didn't plan to make, but I'm happy that I did. Card number six is just a super simple one. I'm going to take that same giant butterfly from the stamp set and I'm going to ink it up with some clear embossing ink and stamp that down onto that blue pattern paper that I have right there. And then I'm going to cover that with that gilded embossing powder. So if that's that gold embossing powder I've been using the whole time. And then I'll heat set that till that is smooth and melted. And the next thing that I plan to do is I actually plan to do a little bit of Copic coloring over the top of this. Now I don't recommend this. Uh, it is said that embossing powder can ruin the tips of your markers your alcohol markers and so do this at your own risk I am doing this like very carefully sticking right to the tip and only going in those areas where the embossing powder isn't but I don't necessarily recommend this because you know if it's something that can actually hurt your marker maybe it isn't something that you should do but I don't know that for sure I'm not willing to really take the risk and just go over the top of the embossing powder so do it at your own risk. All right, now I'm going to start assembling my card. That's how simple this one was. I'd cut down this paper to four inches by four and a quarter. And then I have another piece of pattern paper I'm going to stick over the top of that like a band. And then um, I'm before I attach my butterfly down, I'm going to stamp the word high with the clear embossing powder and then heat emboss that with that gilded embossing powder. And then I did put some foam tape on the back of my butterfly. That's how simple this one was. So that is card number six. I do have a couple of bonus cards that I use with those panels from the pattern paper. So here they are. And now let's take a look at all the cards that I did make for you today. I just felt really compelled to create with this kit. This is why there are six cards with three bonuses. Well, I shouldn't say six. There's five cards, a frame, and three bonus cards. Um, but this was a lot of fun. Uh, and so I would love to know if you had a favorite out of all these projects that I made. Please list that in the comment section down below. I'll have everything that I use listed in the description box down below. So if you liked this video, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And as always, I will see you very soon in the next video. Thanks so much for stopping by.